Oop, there we is. All right. Today we got something special for y'all. Uh, we're going to have to give you some meds today. All right. And basically what that stands for is the most excellent duo Sunday. That's something we're going to be starting up at the first of the year. But right now, just call this a little trial run. We're going to hit the ground running. We're going to do the top five titles of Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, and N64. Yeah, we skipped over a few consoles, but it's okay. We'll get into that in a little bit. But who's joining us today? Drum roll, please. That is my boy, Bag. Say hello, Bag. Hey, everybody. What's back? What's happening? We're back again. Oh, yeah. You know we in it. So uh, Sunday, so this must be my favorite time of day. I get to party on with this uh, wonderful Twitch stream with you. Yeah, man. Oh, man. Glad, glad you're able to join us again. I, I'm looking forward to doing this every single Sunday from now on. After Christmas well, break, yeah. anyway. After Christmas, of course, yeah. I'm about to say, because I think we both have plans for Christmas night next this coming Sunday, and hopefully everyone else has some great plans out there. Oh, absolutely, man. Hopefully Santa brings y'all something real nice this Christmas. Oh, yeah. That's definitely, you know, you know, even, even the Macho Man would agree. Ooh, yeah, it's time for Christmas parties. <laughs> right on, man. But, yeah, um... I'm going to go ahead real quick and start up that scan. You know how I do my OCD. Let me do that. Got to get that scan going. Got to get that scan going. You know, that's right. Okay, okay, okay. So where are we starting? We, got, we, we start with NES, right? Yeah, we're going to start with the NES. We are skipping over Atari. Uh, uh, there's not much to say about it. Yeah, okay, a couple, you know, honorable mentions for Atari. Yeah, Pitfall. Honestly, it's it's all about Pitfall for me. Um, same here. Same here. Frogger was another good one for Atari. Yeah, that's true, too. That's that's very true. That was one, however, I didn't get to play so much on Atari. I played that more on, what was it, Macintosh, the old Apples. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Oh, my gosh. And, and, uh, yeah, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I, I think we also got to send a little shout out if we're going to talk about computer games for a second to Oregon Trail. I mean, yeah. growing up in the mm -hmm. 80s and 90s, you, you lived on Oregon Trail, and hopefully you didn't get dysentery by playing it. <laughs> exactly, man. Yeah, Oregon Trail was Oregon Trail was the shit. Still oh, enjoying God, it. I mean, still to this day, I could just sit there and mindlessly play it and just have a good time. I mean, it's, it, it, it's not a... It, it's one of those games you can really just shut your brain off and just have a good time with. Mm, yeah, for real. And boy, what was it? Uh, I remember that one part. It was always kind of tricky. You were uh, fjording the river, like going across the river on a, a raft or something like that. You'd have to put together. Oh yeah. Oh man, I don't. Probably, probably eight times, at least eight times out of ten, I would say, me and the ox and everybody would be like, "Well, I guess I'm not too good at making rafts." Oh uh, yeah, and I, and the thing I liked about it in school was you would always name the characters after all your friends. And then you mm -hmm. see who would survive to the end. Like it was a yeah. badge of honor to make it to the end almost. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. For some reason, my character was always the first to die. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you took it you took know. it for the team. Yeah, I remember one time I named him after all wrestlers. And um, I remember Kane was the only one I think that survived one time doing that. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, I was cool. playing Oregon Trail way late into life. <laughs> oh man, ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh no, my, my dad bought a Windows ninety five computer in two thousand. People, and the <laughs> only game that would work on it was Oregon Trail. So, in the year two thousand, <laughs> I'm playing Oregon Trail like it's a brand new game. Mm -hmm. It's new to somebody. It was new to you. It was. It was definitely new to me. I mean, I played it in school, but I mean, I logged some serious hours on it for sure when I had it for the home edition. Right. <laughs> And, uh, of course, you got to remember Block Breaker was another good one for that as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, and another one. I used to love to play this in class when they had the little computer uh, computer lab set up. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Oh, definitely a classic right there for sure. I mean, Car mm. I mean, I mean, how could you not like that, that game? I mean, you learned geography and you didn't even feel like you were playing a game. You didn't feel like you were learning nothing, but yet I still to this day can now, I now know where you, you square, well, I know where Yugoslavia used to be. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, they, they give you the rundown, the locations, and a little bit of history to go along with it. Exactly. It was really neat. Good pull on that one. I forgot about that one. Oh, yeah. But anyway. But in, enough yeah, of games. On yeah, the list. Enough, enough of that. Yeah, we'll get right up into the Nintendo, the NES system, which came out when? 83, 84, 85? 85. 85, 85. 85 right? yeah. Yeah. This indeed was the console that reinvigorated the whole market thanks to, oh, well, what happened with Atari, the unfortunate circumstances involved with that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They really, really did find games of E.T. buried in the, in the desert under a landfill. Really? There's a whole uh, documentary about it on, uh, on, I think it was on Amazon. It, uh, yeah, it's uh, all about, they really did bury them. Oh, damn. I'm going to have to check that out one day. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's freaking cool, man. But NES was sold as a, a toy rather than a, a video game system because no shells was stock a video game system after the Atari crash. And mm. uh, so they marketed it as a toy with uh, Rob the Robot. And wow. it, it just took off from there. and It became like the Nintendo Entertainment System, NES. Oh, wow, man. That's funny. They, I guess they had to change their image. They had to shake that whole thing. It's just like it's for adults and for everyone. But nah, this exactly. is for kids, y'all. <laughs> Exactly, and that's, you know, I think gamers, especially like in the later consoles and stuff, uh, not too much past NES, but they were realizing that they were marketing, they started marketing more games to adults, especially when you get around the Sega era, they started marketing mm-hmm. games to adults and stuff like that, and they realized it was a marketplace for everyone. Now, I mean, it's hard to find anyone who doesn't have some form of some kind of entertainment video game system of some sorts uh, to this day. Now, everybody has something now. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Should even... Who was it? KFC ended up coming out with some kind of console a couple years ago. Uh, I, I remember something about that, but I don't really remember the, the whole details behind that. Mm-mm. That's crazy, man. But yeah. Uh, all right. Let me go ahead and hit this other scan, and I'll pull up the images, or at least the folders, before we get into it. Unlike last week, we decided to go a step above and beyond for y'all this week and actually put up a... Uh, uh, the, I put up the cartridge image um, for the pictures, uh, so you can actually see what we're talking about. Um, this is what, the, for me anyway, I try to put the actual co- um, cover of the game and everything to try to, this is how they try to entice you with their, uh, their covers and whatnot. Right on. Right on. So you want to start with your number five, eh? All right, my number five da, 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 is Legends of Zelda... Yep, Legend of Zelda, man. True classic. I mean, it was the first game where you could actually save your progress. Mm-hmm. And you would just, bat, you know, go through the little caves, the little worlds. I mean, battling as Link, trying to rescue Princess Zelda, uh, from uh, save Hyrule from uh, Ganondorf. So, it's just one of them classic games. And I, I just, I, I, I really don't have enough good things to say about it. <laughs> no. Yeah, man, it, it really... <sighs> It really gave you the whole aspect of the open world back then that no other game had did prior to it. And even to this day, that soundtrack, I mean, that overworld soundtrack is always with it. You know? I mean, as soon as you hear it play, I mean, like, I mean, there was a time and place where that was my text mess. I mean, that was like one of my ringtones on my phone. I think it was my text message ringtone was that I, I can't I can't do, do this, this song or whatever, but it was like, did it mm-hmm. or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that is an excellent choice for number five for sure. And I, I do believe that's one that probably would make just about everybody's list. Oh, definitely. Uh-huh. I mean, it's, it's one of the, I think at one point in time, uh, I think it was like one of the best selling video games of, uh, of every system it's been on just about. Mm-hmm. It's usually in the top five or top ten, uh, no matter what, what ga- a game it is. Oh, yeah. Man. Maybe not the RCIs, but that's a whole story for another day. Right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, you pull? let's see here. My number five. Now, this, I'll go ahead and set it up. This was a game I did not play back in the day. I had first played this game in 2011. So it wasn't that long ago. I mean, still, you know, 11 years ago. But not when it originally came out. And I freaking love this game. And this one is called Crystalis. Uh, to oh, me... Nice. Yeah, to me, this was 
and this this came later in the life of the system, but it's very very much taken. Um, you know, some notes from Legend of Zelda, which was your number five, and it just. I don't know, it, it improved on a lot of aspects, and I, I really appreciate it now for what it was. And as far as it being, you know, not getting enough publicity as something like Zelda uh, eventually had and going forward became such an iconic series. And, and this one, you know, it did, it did take aspects of it, but I, I do believe it holds up on its own. I, I, I'm really glad I played it, albeit kind of late, you know. I'll be honest with you, I've never played this game before. I'm going to have to check that one out for sure. Yeah, it's it's definitely worth a look, man. I, th I think you'll awesome. get a kick out of it. it. And it's not very long, even, so you probably beat it. Yeah, in an afternoon, you can handle it. Nice. So All let's right. go back here to your, what are we on, number four? Number four. My number four is the classic Predator and Rambo ripoff Contra. Oh yeah, man. I mean, I've logged so many hours, and like, I, I to this day, I don't think I've ever actually fully beat the game. And if I have, it was only like once. But I would always play with my cousins. Would always come over and have the house and everything, and we would play the game. And uh, the characters were basically ripoffs of uh, Rambo, and I cannot remember the Predator uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's character in Predator. <laughs> oh, Dutch. Mm -hmm. it's Dutch. Thank you. And, yeah. um, you know, you're battling these space aliens going through this world. And I remember it was the first game I remember, like, once you got inside the, I think it was stage two. Yeah, I mean, there was like a 3D aspect to it because you were, you were basically uh, in third person shooting at the screen and everything. And that was the first time I could ever remember a video game really doing that. Um, it was the first time I ever played it. I have another one on the list that also does third person, but that's a uh, story for another later on. But it was just an addictive game had a great I, I still like the soundtrack to that and uh different weapons and it was just a fun fun time to be had by all oh yeah for sure and of course you know it was one of the pioneers of that ever famous legendary konami code exactly up up down down left right a b a b mm, and i'm definitely one of those people in order to beat that game i gotta have that code i don't know about you but... I didn't know about the code until much later on in life, and uh, oh, shoot. I'm halfway tempted now to go back and play it and just uh, use the code, just to see how far I can get into it now, see if I can actually, you know, knock, knock beating it off my bucket list. Right, right. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, let me switch and back And what do we have for number four for you? Number four for myself? Let's see, let's see. Okay. Number four for me, well, how does how does that song go? DuckTales? Oh, yeah, that is my number four. Very nice pick. That, that would be an honorable mention for me. That and Chip and Dale would both be honorable mentions for me. Oh, hell yeah. The, what was it, the Disney Afternoon cartoon box they would have back in the day? Yeah. Shoot. It was a, came on every afternoon, had like DuckTales, I think... Uh, 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 DuckTales, Chippendale, Bonkers, uh, Darkwing mm -hmm. Duck, I think, was on there at one point. Tailspin. Oh, yeah, man. DuckTales, awesome, awesome game. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and a little backstory to this one. One of the reasons why I picked it, not even just that it's it's a great game. It still controls very well, thanks to Capcom and their level of polish with platformers at the time. <clears throat> Mega Man. Uh, I had a friend that I had met back in the day. And a lot of these titles that you're about to see, honestly, because of that friend, uh, it, it kind of influenced my choices here. So yeah, I'll get into it a little bit later on. But this was the first game I ever traded with him uh, to play, you know, at each other's houses. He had Bart versus the world. And I had awesome this. Game. Yeah. And we swapped. And he played... DuckTales for a little while and I played Bar vs. the World and so that's how we started hanging out and but yeah uh, the, the show itself eh, I, I still enjoy it you know even though I know it's dated and everything now and they got that whole new series but yeah even to this day I definitely could still load up this game and hop back into Duckburg or actually all the other locations that you go to in it. oh definitely 
It's, it's one of them games, like, I mean, they remastered it a couple years ago because of how good it was for NES. And mm-hmm. to my knowledge, they didn't change a whole lot. Just basically, it was just the graphics where all they did was update it. Everything else was essentially the same game and everything. But that just oh, speaks nice. to the power of how well made it was. My, my number three is a bit of a weird one. Okay. Because I hated this game as a kid. But it was one of them games I started playing again later on in life and ended up falling in love with it again. And uh, it was a Punch Out. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Mike gl- Tyson. Yeah. But Mike Tyson, yeah, that's right. You know, it's just, uh, I mean, if first fighter you fight, Glass Joe. And also, it was another one of them games that kind of, well, it's kind of like the stepping stone, I would say, to the third person view almost with the way you were fighting in the game. You know, because you're, you're kind of behind him and everything. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's not third person. But anyway, um, and I was just like the whole dodge system and mechanics and like, it was, it was the first game that really kind of like said, oh, uh, that made me go, wow, you can actually dodge, you can actually punch, you can actually do this, you can do that. I mean, you, know, you had to have strategy in beating the games, you know, beforehand, because for a while there, a lot of games, it was just kind of mindless button munchers, especially like beat 'em up games, which were really popular on the NES. Oh, yeah. Um, and this one was one where it kind of made you think, and you got to pick up the strategies and, uh, you know, figure it out. And it's a, another one to this day, I, I've never beaten it. I know at one point in time, me and you went back and tried to play it, and mm-hmm. I don't think either one of us beat it. <laughs> no, man. No. Always. Uh, we, we've gotten to Mike before, but never past Mike. No, no, but uh, it's definitely still one of them games. Like, uh, it's, it's a great game just to... You know, challenge your skill level to kind of refresh yourself uh, on like uh, you know a, a simple basic game, basic premise, but just hours of fun. Oh yeah, absolutely, and and really just to go along with you, this is actually my number three too. So I'm just gonna throw it in there. But yeah, this game, man, uh, like you said, just hours and hours of simple fun, and you you really felt like back then just being in that aspect and uh, that perspective of character. It, you were going toe to toe with some of these colorful people, and yeah, it, it's still there's just nostalgia all over this game. You know, from the the title cards, them sitting in the corners, to him training, you know, with the guy on the oh, bike yeah. and everything. It's just like, yeah, it's still and, really and cool. Was it Mario training him? I always wondered that. It, it kind of looked like Mario. Well, I, no, well, the, who looked like Mario actually was the ref. The ref, uh, I'm the, sorry, that's right. I got it backwards. Yeah, yeah that's okay. He, uh, he, uh, yeah, if that ref wasn't Mario, it, he's he's a very close relation. Because <laughs> they yeah, still, exactly. they, they, they rock in the same, you know, kind of physique and that stash. And it's, it's their trademark. One other question I had, dude, while I was looking this game up and doing my research on it and everything, which uh, I noticed on there, Glass Joe has one victory. Yeah. What the <laughs> hell did Glass Joe beat? <laughs> he must have whipped himself. <laughs> Seriously, you you, you could you could you could just blow on him and take him out just about. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Well, I guess three as well. Yeah, that was my number three as well. We can move on to number two if you want. Coincidental, man, because we did not see each other's list prior to this. We neither one of us knows what's the other no. one's got. Mm-mm. No, no, I'm seeing it for the first time too as I pull up each one. Yep. My number two is not much of a shocker for you, anyway. But I'm, I'm, you know, but for the people who know me, but it's Excite Bike. Hey, oh yeah. Just classic motorcycle game, you know. Hours of fun again, you know. I keep using that term, but uh, the thing that really sold me on this game was you could create your own tracks. And um, mm-hmm. I remember playing at my cousin's house, and we'd all try to make the most messed up, just screw with you type tracks we possibly could, and like. It was the first game that literally had, kind of had like a creative mode almost to it that I can remember. I mean, I'm sure there's others before this, but for me, this was the first one that I remember playing that had like a create mode that just, you know, let you let your mind r- run free. And there was like pretty much nothing you couldn't really, for the most part, create within reason, of course, you know, with the parts they give you. And it was just so much fun. Oh, the yeah. racing was excellent. And just, I still hear that sound in my sleep sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah, man. That that created track thing. It definitely was one of the biggest draws for that title. I'm I'm so glad they came out with that because it really influenced a lot of games 
um, in the future. And it's, yeah, what a, what an amazing, amazing game. I, I really don't think, I don't know. I'm, I'm really trying to think of another motorcycle type of game that even came close to this around that time period. I don't think there was anything. I, I can't think of anything that was any. It was just head, head and heels above everything else. Mm-hmm. I remember playing this at a, a friend's house next door. He used to be a next door neighbor. And I just couldn't believe. I was like, what are you playing? You know, it was the track that he created. I, I do remember, too, this this was this was one of them titles as well. You couldn't really save, right? You had to keep it on. Yeah. So Gosh. if you wanted if you wanted to hold on to your tracks and everything, you had to keep that system plugged in and powered on. And, oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, he must have kept that thing on for at least two weeks before he had to turn it off. But oh, anyway, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stop gushing about his height. <laughs> <laughs> so, what'd you pick for number two? Number two, let me go back to my list here. Okay, number two um, just so happens to be a number two in its series, it's a sequel. And once again, we're going back to Capcom, and it's Mega Man 2. Very nice. I had a feeling. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, you, you knew I had to put a Mega Man somewhere on this thing. Somewhere on that list, there had to be a Mega Man. Yeah, man. And not only gameplay-wise, and it's setting up the entire franchise of Mega Man ever since this title. That opening you know, title scene with the music. Man. Oh, and, and also, uh, pairing with it, uh, when we would have school book fairs, you know, they'd have those pick your own adventure type of books that you would sit there, go to page two if you chose this, or go to page oh, 34. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of the first ones I'd ever got like that was a Mega Man 2 kind of pick your own adventure. So oh, nice. while, this, while this game was hot, I was sitting there enjoying the pick your own adventure um, aspect of it as well. And so that just added to the whole, you know, experience for me. But yeah, ever since then, this is another, it's hard now. It's not an easy game to go back to, especially if your reactions aren't on point. But if you do, there is definitely a lot of fun to be had in this game. So It was one of them games, I remember you had to, like you said, you had to be very precise. Like, there was mm-hmm. like, you know, unlike nowadays with video games where you can like, you have, you know, so many hit points you can take before you die or whatever. In that game, it was pretty much one and done. You got hit, you're over. Game over, pretty much. I mean, you had to be on point with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess we're going on to honorable mentions now. Uh, yep. I mentioned two of my honorable mentions, which was uh, Ducktales and Chippendales Rescue Rangers, were both honorable mentions. And then one, I'm going to take a wild guess and say my honorable mention is your number one. I'm going to mm. take a wild guess, which is Metroid. Mm. Actually, no. <laughs> Oh, Surprising, wow. I'm wrong. Okay. Surprisingly, yeah, the original Metroid, I appreciate it. I understand how groundbreaking it was, but that game aggravates me to no end. I can't believe you didn't put that as number one. I'm shocked, but uh, uh-huh. Metroid would be my honorable mention for Nintendo. It's uh, it's hard as balls at some point to play, but yeah. um, it was revolutionary, one of a kind. Um, definitely inspired so many games going into the future, and uh, I remember everyone like mind being blown. Thomas is a girl. Like, it just, I remember being around the playground and people just, like, losing their, their shit over that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, man. What about you for honorable mentions? Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, two honorable mentions, which I guess if I had to put them in order, my last honorable mention would be Batman the Video Game on Nintendo. Good choice. Yeah, that, another game, it's it ain't easy. But everything about it just screens nostalgia for me especially being a big batman fan and really like the overall packaging of it uh sure it had the burton look to it and then some of the cutscenes, but everything else about it it was really its own thing separate from the movie um definitely and then the first honorable mention another hard ass game uh ninja gaiden or ninja gaiden however you prefer to pronounce it and Very it's a uh, choice yeah, that's another one. I will still attempt to beat my head against the wall and play this game. And I know I'm going to get frustrated, but I can't help myself. I still love it. And both those games are similar, Batman and Ninja Gaiden, because weren't they the, both the ones that had the wall crawl on it? Yeah, they pretty much had the uh, what, um, wall jump situation. Wall jump, yeah. 
Yeah, yep, they showed him. Very good choices, very good choices. My number, uh, I guess we're moving on to number one now? Number one. For me, I mean, it's pretty obvious if anybody who knows me because, like, half my arm is tattooed in this game. <laughs> uh, it is Super Mario Brothers 3. Without a doubt. I mean... I mean, the whistles, the raccoon suit, being able to fly, the match the pictures, you know, your princess is in another castle. Um, I mean, how do you not love this game? I mean, it was, uh, you, you could hide behind things, you know, those hidden, hit, those little hidden things everywhere. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, there was Big Bertha was in it, you could turn to a stone, the frog, I mean, I could just, I could just list things for hours and hours, I mean, like, I... I walked so I, I walked so many hours playing this as a kid, and then a little trivia fact, a little fact for you here. My parents got me a Nintendo NES in 1990 when I was five years old. Or what I they claimed they got it for me as a Christmas gift, but anyway, they spent more time playing the game than I ended up playing it. Um, <laughs> and Super, Mar Super Mario Brothers 3 was a game that we would always play, and to, uh, my dad would always be Mario, I'd always be Luigi, and we'd always try to take you know see who could get to the end the fastest there's so much nostalgia memories the gameplay is excellent uh, i went back and played it recently and realized my jumping is not on point like it used to be <laughs> no, but no. uh my my i have my reaction time has slowed down a lot but it's still one of the one, one of the uh, i i would say hands down one of the best video games of all time not just one of my one of the best nes games oh absolutely and and even regardless of the hype that it got, what was that movie that they really showcased it on? Uh, the Wizard. The with, Wizard. Uh, Fred Savage. Yeah, man. When, yeah, when that movie dropped, it just it elevated that title to a whole nother level, and it was well deserved. The popularity of it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. It, it it was definitely well deserved because, like you said, it is one of the greatest games, one of the greatest platformers as well of all time and there's everything you said about there's nothing else i can say more because you you just hit the nail on the head with this number one so what is your number one good sir my number one uh now I, i'll go ahead and give you a disclaimer here your choice is the better choice uh <laughs> for, for greatest game of all time the only reason why i chose this one is pretty much straight up uh, nostalgia and it was the first title I owned for NES and for a lot of people as well. And that is the original Super Mario Brothers for Nintendo. Very and nice. yeah, it, it's another one of those games where you make it as hard as it needs to be. And just like with all the old titles, it all depends on you. You know, how good them reactions are and how, how good them skills. And they'll let you know. But and this is also another one of those games where... what. What's the record time in beating this game? What, like three minutes or something? There's a way to like do warp zones and stuff. Something like that, yeah. It's, it's something ridiculous like that, like five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, like, I, I saw a guy play three, uh, three different TVs at the same time using a Guitar Hero controller and beat all three of them with one one playthrough in under three minutes. Oh my god. Or mm. under five minutes or something like that. It was uh. It was, yeah. There's whole YouTube records and uh, to to try to beat that game. Oh crap! Man. In crazy fashions and whatnot. Man, that's great. Yeah, it's yeah. uh, it's just still holds a sweet little place in my heart, and I always remember that one. Um, what are we on now? Oh, Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Well, I, I guess I mean. Well, I guess it depends, because Sega actually came out before Super Nintendo. Oh, we can do Sega then. That's what you want to do? Yeah, yeah, let's hit up Sega, which I guess for us would be the genesis for you know, a lot of oh, other places yeah. in the world to be the Mega Drive. True. And let me see here. Let me pull up your thing. I don't have your thing pulled up yet. Okay, there we go. I am ready whenever you are, sir. Uh, my number five is Road Rash. Road Rash. Hell yeah. It is just a basic, straightforward motorcycle game where you can pick up chains and stuff like that and just beat the hell out of the other uh, player, uh, not other players, but other people on the road and mm -hmm. just trying to race to the end. It's it's a very bare bone, basic little game, but 
I can't tell you, like, I spent hours and hours and hours playing this uh, just mindlessly, and uh, just for the nostalgia factor alone, it had to get a spot on my list. Oh, yeah, man. I, like you were talking about, it's, there's not a it's not a whole lot to it as far as complexity, but sometimes you don't need all that, and the you simplicity of what went down. Yeah, right, exactly, and it was just like, you, you went fast, and you beat the crap out of each other. I mean, what kid wouldn't mm -hmm. love that, <laughs> you know? Exactly. Oh, yeah. What'd you choose for number five? Number five on the Sega. Sega. Let's see. Oh, well. Number five, this was also another one. Uh, going back to something I didn't play when it was in its heyday. I played this one actually in 2015. Uh, and then this is when we were hanging together a lot. Uh, oh, yeah. And... Still to this day, I, I think it's one of the best running gunners on the Genesis is Gunstar Heroes. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. I remember you playing this. Oh, yeah. I, really, it, it took a long time for me to just settle in and be like, you know what? I hear so much hype about this title. I really need to give it a chance. And I, I told myself that for about 10 years, you know, uh, and then I just finally, you know, pulled the trigger on and was glad I did because... Yeah, man, it deserves everything it got, every accolade that it ever had. And I definitely could go back and play it again. Oh, definitely. Uh, I never actually played it, but I remember you playing it and everything, and I remember thinking it looked it looked pretty fun, like I said, but I, I, I can't speak too much to it of, other than that. Right, yeah. Yeah, you you get a kick out of it, man. Now, what... I'm about to go back. What, pray tell is your number four that would be mighty morphin power rangers the movie oh yeah i mean just such a i mean it, first off it was in the era of, you know power rangers were big when i was a kid they i remember when they came out and everybody had to have everything power rangers and there was quite a few power rangers games i debated on trying to put on this list i didn't want to i, I almost could have made a whole list of just power ranger games but this one was by far my favorite because, like, you got to fight in and out of the costume, I believe. You got to fight with the Zords. Um, it, you, the only time I think you fight is a Falcon Zord, to my knowledge. I'm someone correct me out there. But mm. uh, it, had told, it told a decent story all the way through, although it was altered from time to time from what actually happened in the movie. Um, but it felt like actually playing, like, an episode of the game is what, what kind of really made me drawn to it. And it was just your classic beat-em-up game with, uh, you know, it's just... You know, just it's Power Rangers. I mean, you know, yeah. what more can mm -hmm. you say? I mean, yeah, it's, really. It's the, per the, the, the perfect TV show for a beat em up. Yeah, it, it really was. It, it was right at the height of its popularity and it just hit off the bat. And still, I think it is the Power Rangers, the movie, both titles, which would be Genesis and Super Nintendo, were, was the superior beat em up to the original, uh, which was fun and everything, but, you know, you couldn't play as, as Tommy. In that original one, in this one, you got him as a White Ranger, which was pretty dope. Oh, definitely. I mean, real quick, what's your favorite uh, Ranger that Tommy played? JDF, may he rest in peace. Yeah, man, it's got to be. You know, it's got to be old school. It's got to be the Green Ranger, right? Really? Yeah, it, it probably uh, overall favorite is is probably Green. For me, it's it's a tie between Green and White. I think White edges it out just a little bit because he had that uh. The talking uh, tiger head sword. Oh, yes. Uh, Saba, what was his name? Sa Saba. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that just barely gives it the edge for me. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you, man. So, so I, I send it back to you for what's your number four. My number four. Let me see. Let me get that scan and I will be with you. Okay, number four for Genesis. Oh, would also probably be one of your faves. It's a beat em up. And it is Streets of Rage 2. Very nice game. Very nice. Oh, one, oh, one yeah. of Streets of Rage. Oh, my gosh. And, and that game, that was another one. Like, I played it with you. Uh, and I never really played it by myself. So I played it by myself about four years ago and really just sat there taking it all in, you know? And, man. It really is one of the best beat-em-ups of all time. Uh, from back in the day, it just 
it stood above a lot of them. And that's, you know, that's coming from an era where there were a lot of beat-em-ups. Albeit not all of them had the polish this did. But still, the amount of choices you had at your disposal. And this one, this one just stands as cream of the crop. I, I can't say enough about it. The, the soundtrack was awesome. The graphics were awesome. The weapon choice, the, uh, oh, the gameplay, the mechanics all felt great. And mm -hmm. honestly, this is a uh, honor, one of my honorable mentions, actually, because uh, nice. on my list. Oh hell yeah! Yeah. Hell yeah! Great minds think alike. <laughs> oh, definitely. Uh -huh. and, and we are great minds of. Nothing, oh yeah. But of nothing, we're... right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, my number three is uh one of one one of our both our favorite classics. Maximum Carnage. Oh shoot, man! Hell yeah. I mean, this is the only LJN video game that is like, like uh, according to the Angry Video Game Nerd, shout out. Um, this is mm -hmm. the only LJN game that was actually good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. the laughing, joking, none that's got it right. But um, mm -hmm. I mean, Spider-Man Battle and Carnage, which Carnage is hands down my favorite Spider-Man villain of all time. There's something about Cletus Cassidy that I just. I don't know if I should be saying this. I was going to say he was, uh, there's something that's just drawn to me, but I don't know if it's right to say I'm drawn to a serial killer. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> that, might, that, might, that might not be the right choice of words there. Um, just say, just yeah, just say you out. like red. Just say you like red. We'll go with that. I like, I like red. Yeah, let's go with that. It, <laughs> he was just more innovative with his weaponry, but anyway, his, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. it, his reason I like Carnage so much, and I, I like the fact that he just didn't care, but... uh right mm. uh but the, the gameplay is awesome the story was awesome and then spider-man just doing what he you know trying to survive the onslaught that is carnage and his family mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it, it really it was one of the few games that i can remember early on that encapsulated its source material you know you really felt like especially if, if you were you know us at that age and everything reading the maximum carnage comics this was the closest we got to being in them, you know, really. And it, uh, they took some liberties with it for sure, but man, it was the closest we had gotten to any type of comic book game. You know, oh, that's not like it. Yeah. What an excellent choice right there. And still like the beat em up mechanics and everything hold up pretty good till today. Oh, definitely. Very. I mean, it's, it's one of the better Spider-Man games till you get to the later systems for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Absolutely. So what you rocking on number three? Well, I think we're syncing up again because this one also happens to be a comic book related title. Uh, now, this one might be a bit of a shocker because this is not a great game by any stretch. This is the original X-Men title for Sega Genesis. Not the Clone Wars. The Clone Wars is the superior game, I have to say. It is absolutely the better game. X-Men 2 Clone Wars. But this one just two. holds. Yeah, X Men Two. Remember that one? The one they just like oh, throw yeah, you in yeah, the beginning. Definitely. Yeah, that that one is really really good. This one, the only reason why this edges it out is because of personal bias. This was the second title that I ever had for the Genesis, and the one I played the most. Of. I even played this more than another title uh, that I had gotten with the Genesis, and this, yeah, like. From everything to its outdated graphics to its janky play style to breaking the game with Nightcrawler, I still love this stupid game. <laughs> I don't know why. Very uh, nice. Yeah. That's my choice for number three. I actually have to point something out on my, my previous look, look or whatever. I mm -hmm. realize, because in order to keep the surprise uh, so we would be able to shock each other or whatever, mm -hmm. I took photoshop i took uh, uh pictures from the internet of all my picks to send to him and everything and i just realized my goofy self put the super nintendo version pick up for the sega pick of maximum carnage oh no oh yeah you did <laughs> I just, man i didn't I just pay noticed, attention uh, i it was it was driving my ocd nuts i was gonna let it slide and just hope nobody noticed but it was driving my OC, ocd nuts i had to say something but it was also available on Sega, and that's where I played it and everything. But I was just like, "Oh my god!" It was, I just, I just noticed that, and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> oh man, that's all good. It, you know, it kind of works out too because supposedly Maximum Carnage for the Genesis is a really hard title to find. So maybe the image was too. You know, it's like, "Oh, throw the Super Nintendo in there." Genesis is a tough one to come by. 
Oh, I still have it pulled up on my computer right now, actually, and um, from whenever the internet comes back up. But um, and yeah, I'm looking right at the picture I should have clicked, and I I see the picture I did click. <laughs> nice. Uh, a little, cool. little error there. Well, fun fact. Fun fact. <laughs> Very but, cool. Uh, I guess we're moving on to number two, right? Number two. This is, uh, my number two was, uh, I remember there was so much hype around this game when I was a kid, and uh, I'm actually kind of cheating a little bit on this one because it, it's kind of an expansion pack type, type game, but it's Sonic and Knuckles. Oh, hell yeah, man. Because I love Sonic 2. It's one of my one of my favorite games. I, I can't tell you how, how, how many times I would, like, fight with my mom to leave the TV on so that I wouldn't lose my progress in, uh, for Sonic 2. And then when Knuckles came around, and I'm like, you go back and play as Knuckles in the Sonic 2 world? What kind of sorcery is this? Yeah, man. You know, and then you had, like, the soul Knuckles storyline and everything, and I just I, I just fell in love with this game. I was like, it was, uh, to be able to fly, to be able to climb things. Uh, and also, it was like, Sonic is red. He's, you know, he, he's, he's cool now and everything. And it was like, just blew my mind when I, when I found out that you could actually place a game on top of a game like a game genie. Um, but it, you know, instead of giving codes, you got a whole new game out of it. Oh yeah, man. Uh, really? I mean, I you go... Oh, go ahead. I'm... Go ahead. Uh, no, the you... fact that you could go back and uh, play over Sonic, the, the original Sonic Two game, was just mind blowing to me. I just remember, you know, thinking like, how is this even possible? How do they do this? You know, and, and I, that's what fascinated me about technology. Uh, really got me into like technology later on in life. Oh yeah, man. It... Sega had a had a thing with their peripherals. Uh, more often than not, they did not hit, but this one definitely did. And like you said, it would create a whole new game off of past titles. There's not enough to say about it, but it is. It should be on everybody's list for one of the greatest Sega Genesis games of all time, without a doubt. Oh, I agree wholeheartedly. Man. And what are you rocking for number two over there? My number two? Huh. Seem to be following a pattern here. This is also a sequel title. And, you know, I always have to throw in a fighting game somewhere. Uh, granted, I took a little liberty with Punch-Out. But uh, this one is for show sure one. And it is Mortal Kombat 2 for the Sega Genesis. Very nice choice. And to me, being old school, still the best Mortal Kombat. <laughs> to me. This was actually an honorable mention for me, as, uh, on, uh, since that's coming up in just a second anyway. Um, you had, like, what was it, six people you could choose from, and, like, you just battled it out, and uh, it was very bare bones compared to what Mortal Kombat became for the time mm -hmm. and everything. And, right, yeah, uh, this one uh, had 12 you could choose from, uh, and this was the one, too, you know, uh, introduction of Reptile, and uh, exactly. you, you could play a Shang song and... Yeah, man, and and also too, Genesis for the most part was always the superior version when it came to Mortal Kombat. Um, you know, thanks they to no blood. small part. Yeah, because they had they had the red stuff. <laughs> yeah. They had right. the, the red, flowy, juicy. Just, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> right. right. I had something well, there, but I lost it. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll ask Carnage about that later. But uh, the. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's still, I think it still holds up. And I mean, granted, it's it's not arcade perfect, but boy, it's just fine for us at home. Oh, my, well, I mean, it's just, um, to me, I, I would agree with you. I still think it's one of the better, um, better, uh, uh more combat games of, of all time. Um, uh, it, it, it was, it was very, bare, like I said, it's very bare bones compared to what it became later on. I mean, like, there was, oh, yeah. yeah, they had special moves and different things you could do, but it's not like what you could do today, but, like, you were able to master that, and you were just, like, you would hold tournaments just to see, like, you know, for bragging rights to beat anybody and everybody that would come and play you or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and, for sure, man. And also, didn't they introduce the, uh, the climbing columns? Oh, the, uh, yeah, the... the, the... Things you play in the game? I can't do yeah. it. Yeah. Ah, shoot, man, now that I don't remember, but I think so. I think this might have been the first one. If not, it was three. It, it wasn't shortly yeah. after this if it wasn't this one. Right. I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. I guess we're moving on to honorable mentions now. Uh, as I mentioned, Mortal Kombat 2 was one of mine. Uh, Golden Axe and Streets oh. of Rage. But... Yeah. 
Hell both, yeah, man. both very very similar to each other, except one set in like Conan the Barbarian dystopia, whereas the other one is uh, just you know kicking everybody's ass in Detroit. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever Streets of Rage was based on, I, I don't, I, I can't think of the name of the city, but I'm gonna say it's Detroit. Uh, right. it's what it always like. mm-hmm. <laughs> We're gonna get some angry letters from Detroit. I feel. No, oh, I hope not. <laughs> Please don't come after us, Motor City. But uh, <laughs> right. yeah, the, those are some excellent. Ah, I forgot about Golden Axe, man. Yeah, that for the longest time that held to me, it kind of held the crown of that medieval uh, type of beat 'em up. It, it was just, it was one of the first to do it and do it well. Oh, very not nice. Very, very, very true. Uh, let me see so here. Oh. The number one now, right? uh, well, oh, my honorable mentions were, let me see. Oh, what did I have? Okay, my second honorable mention. Uh, this also was kind of another medieval one. It was just a little more fantasy esque, but uh, it was Altered Beast. Was my honorable mention? I'm not with that one. Yeah, it's. I don't know. It, it's one of those side scrollers where it constantly progresses forward, and you, you know, you have to keep moving. And as you fight, you're able to get power ups, and eventually you turn into this big beast monster, like a werewolf looking thing. But you get super jacked. And yeah, it's it's pretty rough nowadays. But I remember playing this back when, and just being a little awestruck because I always had a thing about werewolves. And then my second honorable mention, I love everything about this game except the difficulty and how stupid hard the regular thugs and enemies are in it. It's Comic Zone. Let's take Comic it Zone is an awesome game. It is ridiculously hard, though. Oh, God, yeah. Man, it, it would take you... I don't, it just felt like it would take you five minutes to beat one lone guy. Not a boss. Just a regular guy in a panel. Mm-hmm. But the presentation and everything else about it was just wonderful. You know, especially being comic nerds like we were. You know, it was just like, oh man, you could fight in a comic book like your own superhero? It was like, man, this is dope. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, I guess we're moving on to number one. Number which one. For me, this is a. Uh, I, I, I had this game. Um, I remember. I was not 13 when I owned it, but uh, it is MA-13, and I remember having to trick my mom. as like, what is MA-13? I don't know. It, it's, it's not, I had to trick her not to know that it was a rating system. Um, feel guilty about that. But Street Fighter II Special Champion Edition. Oh, you dirty dog. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Love it. I mean, that was, that was like the pinnacle of like fighting games for me. I mean, like... Yeah. I remember me and my cousin would battle for hours and hours and hours, and like that's where like Dalsim is still one of my favorite characters because of the reach. And uh, Bison was a little bit broken on that game. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So playing as him was, I mean, you know, whenever you had to fight him, it was crazy. Uh, and I, I remember reading in a uh, Game Informer or Nintendo Power Up or one of the magazines, like they did a whole article where it was like just basic little backstories behind each one of the characters and like in the book that came with the uh, cartridge had like a little backstories and stuff like that and like it really sucks you into the character and you really like were delved into it more yeah it felt like the stakes were higher oh yeah man yeah this game was it, it still feels really good to this day I know it didn't have the graphical fidelity of the SNES versions of things however the speed and the snappiness of this game was so nice you know and and correct me if i'm wrong but sega themselves came out with a six button controller specifically for this game when it dropped i believe so yes yeah i thought uh i thought i remember hearing about that and to be honest with you a little bit of spoiler warning here going into my first one uh you're making me look bad because i didn't pick this for my number one and i run a fan site for street fighter <laughs> <laughs> you uh you're showing me up over here i don't like it no i'm just kidding that's that's great though uh, i really appreciate you choosing that and it should be up there because it is still one of the greatest 16-bit fighting games oh definitely what did you uh, pick for number one then i'm curious because i figured that would be some kind of street fighter game i figured was going to be your number one as well yeah you just figured 
but it ended up being our little blue hedgehog, and it was Sonic number two. Very nice. Yeah, you know, the one that came with the system uh, after a little while. It was just like, well, when I said, you know, earlier about I played that X-Men game more than a previous title, that was my first one. Well, this was my first one because it came with the Sega Genesis, which was, I think we both had like the second model of it uh, that came yeah. out. The, yeah, the one that was just pretty much all black. Um, but this one I did after after I had my obsession with X-Men played the mess out of this one and yeah the whole inclusion of tales being able to fly and just having a partner with you the stages the music i mean it, honestly you can put any of the sonic games up there in a top five for the genesis uh this one just holds eh, a little bit more memory for me but i don't know oh, definitely. An another one you know you just go back and pick up anytime you want you still have the glasses very nice, very nice.